All right, this morning, um, I really think Howard Valentine should be up here giving this talk, but for some reason, I'm the one doing it, so um, I'll, try to, I'll try to go through this and, and give you an update. First of all, let me say um, thank you to the peanut farmers, the National Peanut Board, all the grower groups. Um, you guys have helped fund this uh, peanut genomic initiative over the past couple years, and, and you've committed um, money, and you've committed expertise, and reviewing things with our boards and things like that. So we just really want to say thank you for all the, um, all the help that you've given us and all the financial help and all the support. So one of the things that I wrote over this morning with a good friend of mine, Miriam, who's running this seminar today also, um, and she said to me, she said, my, what a difference a year makes. And that can be from a personal standpoint, from a professional standpoint, but from a genomic standpoint, what a difference a year makes. Man, do we have a really good story um, to tell. So the first peanut genome is sequenced. In August, I think it was August of 2014, there was a, a press release from the University of Georgia. Dr. Ozias Akins was on the cover, and, uh, and she's our cover girl for the peanut genomics uh, initiative. Um, but it, you can read right there, a team of scientists, um, the International Peanut Genomic um, Peanut Group Initiative, PGI, we sequenced the peanut's genome. Now actually, um, what we did was uh, we sequenced the parents. The, the two diploids uh, of the peanut genome, and we're gonna talk about that in just a second, but this was a great big breakthrough for us as an industry. Um, it is a, it's a wonderful foundation for which to lay um, the whole peanut genomic sequence on, and so it's a really proud year for us in 2014, and I think we've come a long way in the first couple of years we've been working on it. So what do we actually sequence? We actually sequence some diploids, and basically what a diploid is, is this like me and you, it's a human. We have two sets of chromosomes in our cells, but the peanuts that you plant that all these guys have been talking about today that are very wonderful peanuts are actually tetraploids. So they actually have four sets of chromosomes. And so I was telling Corley this morning, one of my new roles in the industry is working with the Peanut Institute as well. And so I've been thinking about what makes the peanut so wonderful because it, it has mountains of nutrition. Um, it's flavorful. It's a medicine in itself if you read all the peanut nutrition work. And I've decided because it's twice as good because it's got two sets. I mean, it's got four sets of, of chromosomes instead of two. So. Um, as we continue this, we are looking now at, at um, sequencing and working on the cultivated peanut, which is the uh, Arachis hypogea. And we're continuing to look um, and make functional improvements to these sequence and, 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 and genomic maps. So that's a really good thing that we're working on. We're working with a group over in Alabama now. Originally the genome was sequenced in, in China. But we've actually moved over, and I'm not going to read all this, you can look at it, but there's a lot of new sequencing technology out there, new approaches, and this Hudson Alpha group over in, in Huntsville, Alabama, which we like because it's in the southeast and it's part of our, our core group. Um, they are actually working on new sequencing approaches to add some additional sequencing on the current parents that we have. And then they're looking at um, the TIF runner also to improve data on that. So um, I feel like we're, we're headed in the right direction to, call, um, to sequence the, the tetraploid, and we've got a lot of good work going there. Marshall touched on this at, um, at the Dawson lab. They are doing some sequencing of the, I mean, some, some evaluation of the real populations. There's other places, and I don't want to name them all, but I know that Dawson has this place, um, as well as um, Mariana, Tifton, lots of places, Citra, Griffin. There's lots of places working on this real population. And these are the parents. I was just going to show you kind of the parents of the 16 uh, real populations that we've started with, and there's lots of them that come. But specifically for the grower groups, I think it's important for you to understand what we're trying to find out. We're trying to find out what genes control um, these actual traits. Let's see if I can get it on here. But you can see them at the top. We're obviously looking at tomato spot and wilt virus. The things we've been talking about today, early and late leaf spot, um, the white moles, sclerotinia, and CBR. So you can see that we've picked some really good varieties and we're trying to understand those, we're trying to grow them out, we're trying to find out what is, what you see in the field, what gene controls that. So the way this whole thing works is, you map and you sequence the DNA, you understand what genes are there, and then you understand what gene controls what trait. And then these breeders can take all that information, hopefully, as Corley talked about his high leg variety, and say, hey, this plant has this gene, and I know this gene does this X, Y, Z thing, and so I can put this in my breeding program and be much more successful in terms of getting a peanut. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic project. It's an industry project. Um, we should, we're all on fire about it, and I really think it's, it's going in the right direction. Just some thoughts on the um, assessing the traits in the germplasm. 
don't know if you know what the germplasm is. Some of you, I know the breeders and the scientists do, but basically the germplasm is, is um, a collection of seed in the University of Georgia system. Actually, it's at Griffin under the USDA lab in Griffin, Georgia. And the seed that we have is basically the crown jewels of everything we do. So that seed is so important because inside that seed should be every type of trait that we need to breed and to make a more successful peanut um, plant. And so what they're doing currently is they're phenotyping, which means they're looking at all the traits physically with their eyes and chemically with tests. And then they're genotyping, where they're trying to understand what genes control those traits, the core germplasm that is in China, India, and the United States. And when they do this, they'll be able to use that phenotype then to select varieties with that type of resistance that we were talking about, whether it's spotted wilt or, or leaf spot or whatever. Next year, they'll seek what's important um, selected varieties that they think have some real potential and they'll start to compare the genomes of the resistant and the susceptible varieties to see what's different, because that's what you have to do. You have to understand what's different, so that's how you decide if this gene controls this. And then looking for gene markers so that the breeders can very specifically mark, go in and find the, the peanut seeds that have the traits they want using these markers. So it's a fantastic program, and the germplasm um, is a really, really, really crown jewel for, for us as far as the peanut industry. And it's very well kept now, and we feel really good about where we're headed with that. Just a couple other things, some of the markers that we currently have, how lake, obviously Corley talked about that, the nematode resistance, which Corley has as well. And then Marshall just talked about the leaf spot that they have found um, in, in the Dawson lab. Some other ones that we think are coming soon, a spotted wilt, uh, spotted wilt virus, early leaf spot, CBR, white mold, thrips, leaf hopper, nematodes, kernel size. And then Marshall was talking about the drought that he's seen in the real population. So, We've got a lot of exciting things coming and it's really um, developing very quickly. And we've got the world's best scientists working on it and that's what's so exciting is to watch them uh, have their aha moments and then come and share and get excited and it makes us excited as an industry and we should be really proud of that. <laughs>